don't buy these seven hyped expensive designer bags. Instead, consider buying these amazing alternatives at much more reasonable prices. The first bag on the list is the bag that inspired me to do this video. It is the beautiful Loewe puzzle bag that I once owned, that I recently sold and regretted. Yes, seller's remorse big time. I go into all the details about why I regret selling that bag in a recent video where I discussed the recent luxury items I sold and why. But I realized I was really missing the functionality of that bag, so I don't really need exactly Exactly that same bag back in my collection but I was missing something like that which started my quest to find a good alternative so I found two amazing alternatives. The first alternative option will come as no surprise to those of you who watch my videos regularly. It is none other than my JW Anderson corner bag. This is currently my everyday bag. The biggest reason why I think this is such a great alternative is because this bag was designed by the exact same designer. J.W. Anderson himself, who is the creative director of Lo Bebe. He designed the puzzle bag and he designed this corner bag, which belongs to his own brand. Not only the two bags are designed by the same person, there are a few similarities between the two. They both have the top handle, the adjustable shoulder strap, that bit of slouchy silhouette, giving it a very casual, cool vibe. This corner bag comes in two different sizes. This is the smaller out of the two. There is a larger one. I opted for the smaller one because I am not someone who needs to carry a lot of things with me. And I like the look of the smaller one better. I actually really like like the size of this one because the biggest issue I had with the Loewe puzzle bag, mine was in the size small. Even though it's called a size small, it was a little boxy on me. Because of the rectangular shape, it did stick out of my body a lot. Whereas this one here has a more sort of tapered profile that I feel it sits on my body a lot better. I also love this oversized metal link feature, which is apparently a signature for JW Anderson. Makes this bag really unique looking. The leather is relatively on the smooth side. I'll have to use it a little more to report on the wear and tear but so far it's been great. The only concern that some of you mentioned in my unboxing video is that the opening seems a little small. I agree. I think this is a little better on the larger size but personally it doesn't bother me because I know exactly what I'm bringing. I don't have to yank the bag open to actually look at it to see what I'm grabbing. Even in my bigger bags with bigger openings what I usually do is I just stick my hand in there. I know what I'm feeling for and I grab the thing in question. So the opening it hasn't practically been bothering me much. Of course, we have to discuss the price point. The Loewe puzzle bag at the moment retails for something like four and a half thousand Australian dollars for the small size, which is another reason I wasn't about to repurchase that exact same bag. When I purchased it back in 2019, I remember paying around 2,800 Australian dollars. So I really didn't feel like paying another $2,000 for the exact same bag that I've already experienced. Whereas this corner bag retails for around 1,300 Australian dollars. So this is one that I absolutely recommend you guys check out if you are into the whole Loewe Bay puzzle look but you don't want to pay over $4,000. The other alternative I recently discovered is actually from Loewe and it is the mini hammock hobo bag. Even though they're called mini hammock bags, they were actually pretty generous on the inside. It has a top handle, a crossbody shoulder strap, and you can also cinch the top handle bit and make it into a fortune cookie shape, which is that shape that the hammock bag gives you when you fold the bag, which is why this belongs to the hammock family. The reason why I think this is a great alternative to the puzzle bag is because one, it's from the same brand, so you're going to get the same top-notch quality leather. Two, the price point. It was like half the price of the puzzle bag in the small size. So this retails for 2,450 Australian dollars currently, which I think is a really reasonable price for something so beautifully made. The opening, unlike the JW Anderson corner bag, was actually even bigger than the base of the bag. I personally am so interested in that bag. If I knew of the existence of that bag at the time I decided on the JW Anderson bag, I honestly can't imagine which one I would have picked. I really like them equally as much. Speaking of smart alternative options for the hyped expensive designer items, I also no longer see a huge value in spending crazy amounts of money on designer fine jewelry. I do have a modest collection of designer fine jewelry and I do love them to bits, but some of these pieces I feel like don't really warrant the price point that they're charging just because they have a big brand name like Cartier or Van Cleef. I mean, as you can see, I am wearing a Love Ring and the Justin Clue bracelet. I do love some items 
iconic pieces by some of these designer brands. But when it comes to everyday fine jewelry that you can just leave on, forget about, that will last you through the years. These days, my most worn, great value for money fine jewelry pieces are actually the ones that I'm wearing at the moment, my earrings and the necklaces. These are all from Ideal. They are the pieces that I wear every single day. They are so carefree because they are made of solid 14 karat gold and lab grown diamond. They are so stylish and timeless. The quality is amazing. You can just see how shiny these chains are. I love a good shiny chain, which is one of the things that I actually love about Cartier and Van Cleef necklaces. And let me tell you, Ideal chains are just as shiny at a fraction of the cost. So I'm delighted to say that this portion of the video is in collaboration with Ideal once again, because it is truly a brand that I stand behind 100%. So let me also take this opportunity to show you some of the new pieces that I've added to my everyday jewelry collection. You guys have seen my Lena necklace, which is one of my all time favorite necklaces that I wear basically every day. I got a new necklace that I stacked with the Lena necklace called the Grace. This has an emerald cut diamond right in the middle with a halo of smaller round brilliant diamonds. I love how elegant the Grace design is. It almost looks a little vintage, but at the same time, it still looks really modern. I also have a new pair of earrings. These are called the Emma. It is also an emerald shaped diamond. Again, love the simple elegance of this design. And I basically only needed to add this portion, which is the add on portion of the earrings because I did already own a couple of these stud bases. So the other amazing thing about Ideal is their modular concept. Most of their pieces are designed to mix and match with each other. You can buy the one base and buy different add-ons to create different looks. So for example, with the earrings, you can just buy the one pair of base studs and they have so many add-on styles that you can choose from. Same with their necklaces, you can buy the chain once and buy different pendants to create different looks. So your dollar definitely goes even further on top of their already great price points because they don't have the crazy luxury markups and their diamonds are top tier lab grown diamonds, which are physically identical to your traditional mined diamonds, but they are the sustainable alternatives and they do have a much more reasonable price point. Also, the designs are more unique with a lot of your designer fine jewelry pieces. So many of them have become so popular and mainstream that you probably know in your circle so many people that have the love bracelet, the Alhambra necklace from Van Cleef. I mean, some of these pieces have become so commonly seen that I do really appreciate the unique design of the ideal pieces. I honestly get asked so often where my jewelry is from whenever I wear my ideal pieces and I get a lot of compliments on them. So I'm going to link to Ideal and direct links to my favorite pieces from Ideal in the description section below. So please go ahead and check them out. I also have a discount code, which I'll leave on screen and in the description section as well. So if you happen to find anything you love, make sure you snatch up some further savings by using my discount code. Thank you so much, Ideal and you guys for making another great collaboration possible. Next hyped bag on our list is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 20 in the coated canvas. I believe it comes in the monogram and the demi Ibn at the moment and there are some leather versions as well. Louis Vuitton Speedy has forever been a classic and the size 20 is probably currently the most popular size of all sizes that they come in. And for good reason, I definitely see that the size 20 is the perfect everyday size. It's not too bulky, but it's not too mini. You can fit a decent amount without having a bulky bag. So I definitely see the merit in this size. And I've also considered the Speedy 20 as my everyday bag before I ended up adding the JW Anderson corner bag. I did really like the Speedy 20, but guys, the price point at the moment is 3,350 Australian dollars, which I don't understand that it costs more than the size 25 Speedy, which is actually a larger size. I know it comes with a fancy guitar strap and everything, but it is a much smaller bag. I feel like Louis Vuitton is just charging more because the size is so popular. For me personally, in Australian dollars, when a bag tips over the $3,000 mark, I have to absolutely really be sure about it. But anyway, so I decided against the Speedy 20, even though I could see all of the merits. So I also considered a couple of different options that were really similar bags to the Speedy. And my favorite alternatives were the Celine Mini Boston bag and the Gucci Ophidia Mini Boston bag. Both of these bags have that exact same silhouette as the Speedy. The sizes are pretty comparable. I believe that the Celine Boston bag 
bag is a little taller but they're pretty similar sizes they do have pretty similar looks when you wear them but what I like about these two options is that they're just not as commonly seen especially the Celine Triumph the Gucci Gigi logo I feel like it's a bit more recognizable but I feel like even that is not as overly done as the Louis Vuitton monogram. With the Celine Triomphe monogram, I definitely feel like it's pretty subtle. It's pretty understated. If you know Celine, you recognize it. If you're not interested in bags, it's not like you're gonna be able to recognize that. Also, the price points, both of them sit around the 2,800 Australian dollar mark. The Celine Triomphe, I believe, is a little less at around 2,750, if I remember correctly. And both of these bags, are actually from big name brands so I feel like these two are great alternatives that you can get for less than that 3,000 Australian dollar mark. Next one is the Hermes Mini Kelly. This is probably one of the most coveted and wanted designer mini bags of today. But I feel like recently it has become a little bit too overhyped. You know, with Hermes, Kelly's and Birkins, the whole saga about you can't just walk into the store and ask for one of these bags. So you do need to build a relationship with a sales associate. We all know what that means. It means that we do have to build a purchase history. There is that Hermes lawsuit at the moment where two people from California, I believe, are suing Hermes for link selling. I mean, no comment there. But I just have to say, at least in my city here in Sydney, it has become so, so difficult to get one of these mini Kelly. There was once upon a time that I really wanted another mini Kelly in a lighter neutral since my one is in the black with gold hardware. It could be a little harsh against some summer outfits. So for a while I really wanted say a gold or a more cream color mini Kelly but you know my love for it has dwindled a little I'm just not willing to put in that much effort to get a mini Kelly then I realized there are a ton of great alternatives and one of these alternatives I am seriously loving and considering because I think the quality is there the aesthetics is there and what I'm talking about is the La Large Beaumont Maya Mignon bag I believe this brand is based in the UK the quality is top-notch their gold hardware is actually plated with real gold which even said brands that charge five figures for their bag you probably know what brand I'm referring to don't even do that anymore I've seen this bag on Instagram on a few fashion bloggers and I absolutely love this tan brown color which I think is a great alternative to the Hermes Mini Kelly in the gold color I am seriously in love with that one I mean it's got the top handle it's got a very similar size it also has the strap the lock, even the key clochette, which the mini Kelly doesn't even come with the lock and the clochette, which all the other size Kellys do. I don't know why. And it just looks like a well-made, well-constructed leather bag. That one comes in at 1,550 Australian dollars, which is like one-tenth of the cost of this mini Kelly. And we're just talking about the cost of the bag, not even the history building purchase that you have to make. So I am completely turned off getting another Mini Kelly and I am seriously considering the La Large Beaumont Maya bag. Another great alternative is the Ferragamo iconic top handle bag in the mini size. That one actually really gives me the vintage Mini Kelly vibes, probably because of the taller, rounder top handle. I checked it out in person. Ferragamo iconic top handle bags. I can tell you the quality is amazing. The leather is so shiny and beautiful. The attention to detail is on another level. And the retail price is 3,350 Australian dollars, which is basically the same price as the price of the Louis Vuitton Speedy 20. If you looked at two bags, which bag actually looks more expensive? I think we can all agree that the Ferragamo bag looks like a more expensive bag. I mean, some people may argue that the resale value will be much higher with the Louis Vuitton Speedy. I agree. So if you see value that way, I can see, you know, that the Speedy is maybe a more value for money purchase, but solely from the standpoint of the quality of bags that you get for your money, I think the Ferragamo icon bag is just such an amazing choice. Next up, we have to discuss the Chanel Classic Flap. Where do I even begin with their yet another big price hike just I think last week. I believe now that larger sizes like the Jumbo and the Maxi have surpassed the 20,000 Australian dollar mark. Wow, I used to own the Jumbo in the black with gold and I paid like $7,000 for it back in the day and I thought that was a lot of money. But to pay $20,000 for that bag, 
I mean, it is crazy. I can tell you right now that if I didn't own a classic flap in my collection, by the way, this beige clear one is in the medium size and this is the only classic flap that I have in my collection. I have no intention of adding more. If I didn't have this one, I don't think I'll be paying something like $18,000 to get one of these bags. I would much rather just do without even if I didn't have this bag in my collection already. But what I think is a great alternative are your Chanel mini flaps. They come in the square and the rectangular. Mine is a little bit of a seasonal one because it has the top handle. There are also the more classic versions without the top handle. Now, even though these mini flaps also saw crazy price increases in the last few years, I believe now they retail for over 8,000 Australian dollars, which is crazy. I still think that if you're really looking for that Chanel classic flap, maybe get one of these minis and at least you're getting all of the classic features like the CC turn lock, the leather and metal interwoven strap, the back pocket, basically all of the features, especially in the rectangular shape. I think it looks pretty similar to your classic flap in the larger sizes. It is, of course, a bit smaller, but it has the same shape. Mine's a bit different because it has the top handle, but if you go for the ones without the top handle, they look pretty similar to the classic flap. The capacity isn't that much less than the capacity of the small or medium flaps because these classic flaps have two flaps, so a double flap, whereas the minis only have the one flap. So you can actually fit more than you think in these. For like $10,000 less than one of these bags, I have to say, if I didn't own any Chanel bags in my collection and I really wanted the classic look of a classic flap, I would just go for a mini rectangular flap any day and I think I'll be completely happy with it knowing that I didn't pay $18,000. So yes, even though the mini flaps are so expensive as well now, if you really need to scratch the itch of wanting a Chanel classic bag, this is a great option to go for. Next up is the Hermes Mini Evelyn bag. Now, this is probably the most affordable bag from Hermes, but still this one has seen a huge price increase too. When I bought it three years ago, I paid something like $2,700 for it, Australian, and the current retail is over $3,400 Australian dollars. I think it is still a reasonable price for an Hermes handbag, but it is not the most versatile bag if you ask me. It is an exclusively casual crossbody bag. There's no top handle. I mean, you could probably attach a handle, but I don't think that this bag will look that great with a top handle. It's just got the non-adjustable fabric crossbody strap, and it is basically an unlined bag with one simple compartment inside and apparently that is not the front of the bag everyone wears it this way because of that pretty perforated edge but this is actually the front of the bag you can actually see it from the stud closure so if you're just looking for a bag that looks like this with great quality that you can just wear casually and you're not really after the whole Hermes bag thing then I think a great alternative to this is the Longchamp Fallone bag I don't know if that's the right way of pronouncing it probably butchering it but it looks really similar to the Evelyn bag it comes in a variety of beautiful colors I saw a couple of really nice neutral colors it also comes with the added bonus of a top zipper closure so it is a much more secure closure than just that thin snap closure that the Evelyn has and Longchamp is definitely a well-respected brand and they offer some really amazing prices for a still luxury brand and this following bag comes in at 660 Australian dollars and when I checked it out in person honestly if I was just looking for a bag with this kind of a silhouette I would not bother with the Hermes version of it I mean I love this one because I have it in my collection but I think the biggest reason why I really wanted to add this one back then was because I couldn't believe that I could purchase an Hermes bag for like 2000 something Australian dollars. I thought I can't pass up on it because it is such a great price point for an Hermes bag. But now that the price isn't so amazing, I don't know if I would purchase this again. If I need a bag that has this sort of a shape and functionality, I'll just simply go for an alternative like the Longchamp version. Staying with another Hermes bag, the Hermes Constance bag. This is not technically a quota bag like the Birkin and Kelly where you have to wait to be 
offered this bag and you can only get two per year but it is still a very popular bag that you can't just walk in and ask for it you do need to have a relationship with a sales associate and they can help you out with getting this bag now I was never a big fan of the Constance bag because of that big H buckle at the front I just felt like it was a little bit too loud in the recent years I have become a little more open to the idea of it but then again I still can't get over the price point I don't even know the exact prices of the Constance bag but I think they are around the 16, 17,000 Australian dollar mark for the smaller size, the size 18 in the basic leather, like an Epsom leather, which is the cheapest leather that they offer. So if I'm spending something like 16 to 17,000 Australian dollars, I don't think I would really go for a Constance bag because to me, there are so many other bags out there that can give you that sort of a vibe. Arguably, you can say that for every bag under the sun, but I feel like at least for the Birkin and the Kelly, there's nothing quite like it. Whereas with the Constance, I feel like the shape and the vibe is a lot more generic. It is a much simpler looking bag in my opinion. So I have two alternatives that I really love more than the Constance bag especially the price point. But even if the price point wasn't a factor, I actually like the design and the aesthetics of these bags better. First one is the Celine Triumph bag in the teen size. It just looks like Parisian chic in a bag. It has a very similar shape to the Constance bag where it's just a simple flat bag. It has a shorter strap which is adjustable and it is that sort of square boxy style bag. I don't really need to even explain any further. I feel like the shape and the silhouette are quite similar but I do prefer the Celine one because there's just something that looks a bit more cool and modern about this Triumph bag and I love the Triumph logo a lot more over the H logo because I feel like the Triumph logo is again a little more subtle it's not as recognizable so this bag is one that I am currently highly obsessed with another great option that I've been obsessed with ever since I got it last December is the Demilia Vancouver bag. Mine is in this beautiful off-white color. It has been spring and summer here in Sydney since I got these bags. So I can tell you that I've used this bag so much more than I thought. This Demilia bag is currently really popular and I can just see why everyone is loving this bag. It is simple, it's edgy, it's modern, it's well-made. I love this opening. I'm storing the strap in Inside. It's spacious, it's got compartments, it's got a pretty similar shape to the Constance bag without the weight and without the price point. I mean even how the strap attaches to the bag is really similar to the Constance bag. So just like the Constance, you can wear it on the long setting or you can double up the strap and wear it as a shorter shoulder bag. So this Demelia Vancouver is again a favorite of mine. I believe it also comes in a smaller size and I am seriously considering getting another one of these in a smaller size, maybe in a darker color. So at the moment, what I'm thinking is, should I get the Celine Triumph bag because I've wanted it for a while on and off? Or should I just opt for a Demelia Vancouver bag in the same black and gold combination, but in the smaller size. I'm really thinking about it. What I love about the Demelia bag is also the price point. This bag is between like six to 700 Australian dollars, depending on the size and the finish. It comes in like different finishes like pebbled leather and suede as well. But for the most part, the price point is so, so great. When you just look at this bag, maybe the quality is not Hermes nice, but for the price point, the quality is definitely there. You're definitely getting your value for money in this bag. Next up is the Dior Book Tote with the strap. Mine is in the mini size. This was the first size that they did with a shoulder strap. Dior book totes traditionally only come with the top handles, but recently Dior released book totes with the shoulder strap. Firstly, this mini, and now they have larger sizes of book totes with the strap. I bought this last year, and this is a bag that I adore and use so much. Compared to their traditional counterparts without the shoulder strap, this version is definitely more practical and more usable. However, sometimes I look at this bag and think, does this bag look like it's worth 3,600 Australian dollars? Actually, my mom pointed this out to me. She's like, what, that bag is $3,600? And she knows designer bag prices, but even then she was like, that's so little and dinky and it's just fabric. Even though it is that beautiful Dior Jacquard, it's still not a leather bag. So yeah, sometimes I look at it thinking, doesn't really look like it's worth $3,600. I still love it, but I think that there are 
definitely better alternatives or more reasonably priced alternatives that still give you that look and functionality. And one that I would personally seriously consider is the mini size in the Chloe Woody Tote. Now mine's in the small size, so I'm talking about the size even smaller than this, which I believe will be actually quite a similar size to this book tote. They're definitely not the same bags, but if you're just looking for that top handle bag that is a cute mini size that is just an easy throw on and go toss everything in sort of a bag with the shoulder strap i mean the chloe woody tote in that mini size which has that rectangular shape as well has all of those features and it is still a pretty classic designer bag i mean chloe bags are known to be i guess trendy and we always worry about how timeless they're going to be and all of that but the Woody Tote has stayed popular for quite a number of years now, so I would personally feel comfortable investing in a Chloe Woody Tote even in 2024. And of course, we have to mention prices. Like I said, this Dior Book Tote is 3,600 Australian dollars, whereas the mini size Woody Tote sits at. 1,110 Australian dollars and a lot of the times you can get deals on the Chloe Woody Tote on places like Farfetch. They sometimes have 10% or 20% off certain brands and Chloe items are often included in those promotions. So I believe you can even pick this up for a lot cheaper than the recommended retail price of 1,100 Australian dollars. So if we're looking at the price point, even if this is a trendy bag, I mean, I don't think that price point is bad at all if you get to use it for a good few years. Yes, it's still definitely worth it. I mean, who's to say that the book tote is going to be all that classic? Everyone thought the book tote was going to be a phase as well, but it's still here. So I wouldn't say there's that much difference in terms of how timeless these bags are going to be. So yeah, I really love the mini size in the Chloe Woody tote. So these are some of my favorite, more affordable alternatives to the very popular hyped designer bags. What do you guys think about these alternatives? Do you think that these are better alternatives or would you rather pay the money and stick to the popular versions? Do let me know in the comments below. Once again, check out Ideal's beautiful pieces. I'll leave all the links below as well as my discount code. Thank you again to Ideal and you guys for making this collaboration possible. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As always, thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today and I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video. Bye guys!